Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, I'm Tanya and I would love for you guys to subscribe. So this video is actually long overdue. I'm going to be talking about my new business and I'm going to be telling you guys how you can start your own business if that's something that you're interested in. And I did get a new camera so if this looks different, um, it is because I got a new camera. I'm using my vlogging camera that I just picked up because I didn't want to set up my big one. Hopefully it looks okay for you guys. I got my ring light going and I have an overhead light. So hopefully it's not too dark in here because it's nighttime. But yeah, I'm just going to go ahead and jump right into all of this. So I did start a business. It is called Yellow Butterfly Home. Right now we are carrying a lot of home accents. Um, there will be a expanded furniture line going in once I can get that going. My dad is the one that makes all the furniture, so I'm kind of on his schedule for that. But a lot of the home accents I've done myself, and I will show you some of them here. And then I also have the my Shopify site, which is yellowbutterflyhome.com, as well as an Etsy site, which is etsy.com slash shop slash yellow butterfly home. I will leave both those linked down below if you're interested in taking a look at them. I'm still working a lot on pictures, stuff like that, which is another reason I got a new camera. I'm hoping this will improve my pictures. But right now, I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys some of the products that we're carrying. I'm really excited about this because it's something I've wanted to do for a very long time. This is probably one of my favorite things to do is to create home decor items using a lot of different things. So I'm going to show you some things I've painted, some things that I've stained, some things that just are here. I don't know <laughs> how to describe it. Um, but yeah, let me show you guys the items and then I'm going to get into some questions that um, I had when I started my business and hopefully by me sharing them with you guys you will be able to start your own business if it's something that you're interested in. So first off, I'm going to show you guys some wall art. So this is a pineapple canvas that I hand painted. Um, I just kind of did uh, like a bright, bold, tropical theme. I thought it came out really cute. This is an 8x10 canvas size. So there's a white background with this tropical feel. Really cute. This is available on our yellowbutterfly.com website, as are all the products I'm going to show you. And when I switch to Etsy products, I'll show you, I'll tell you that those are Etsy. This is another canvas available on our site. This is the I Love You to the Moon and Back canvas. This is hand painted, and then these are letters. So you can kind of see they're made out of glitter lettering. This is a 16 by 20 canvas. I really love the way this one turned out. It's really, really cute. And if you guys can see behind me, well, you can't really see, but I have another one painted up here that I'm just going to have to add the final touches to. And then that one will be available as well. We also on our site are carrying um, some different picture frames. This is just one example of a picture frame. So this is the gray glitter. It's called Glitz on the website. And this one is a gray with some white and glitter glass in it. It's really, really pretty. I really love the way these turn out. The picture size is a three and a half by five, and then the outer edges are a little bit bigger than that. But yeah, you guys can see it's all painted on the back all the way through. So yeah, that is another one of the items. And there's quite a few picture frame um, options on there. I'm going to show you another picture frame option, which is the Able. So this is actually a uh, made out of reclaimed wood, I believe. He said, yeah. So this one is made out of the reclaimed wood. You can see the different sizes, different thickness, texture here. And this is where you put your picture. Did I grab a picture? Let me grab a picture just so I can show you guys real quick. But here is just a picture. And then you just clip it in here, and that's what it looks like. So, yeah. This is the Able. I really love these, the way they turn out. I made them in gray. Um, if we get some feedback on this and people are interested in other colors, I was thinking about doing like an espresso color and possibly a natural wood color as well. But for now, I just did the gray. And then for a wall decor piece, I hand painted and stained this 
arrow is a one arrow it comes with these picture hangers on it already so you don't have to worry about adding anything to the arrow and I just did a dark stain with a uh, aqua accent I think it's really cute I love how the hand painting makes it look more rustic and I just really like the way that these turned out so that is our wooden arrows and the last thing I'm going to show you from the website before I get into the Etsy stuff is this coat rack. So this is made out of reclaimed wood. There are four hooks on here. These are double hooks so you can hang on the top and the bottom. You guys can see that there. It will have hanging hardware. I still have to add that on here. Um, but you won't have to add anything on these as, at all. I was waiting to do the hanging hardware for my dad to do it <laughs> just so it would be a little bit better. But that's the back right now. And then there will be two pieces, on one on each side, where you can hang. Um, so yeah, that is our wooden coat racks. They're really cute. I really like these. They're nice and big. And I think these would look really good in foyers and everything. So, moving on to Etsy. I do have a couple things here from my Etsy site. I don't have a lot of stuff because it's actually all in the garage right now. I have a craft show in a couple weeks. Um, and I haven't dug into those bins yet. But I will show you guys. So, Etsy I save for things that are one of a kind, such as... I got one sheet of glass and I made something with it of tile mosaic glass and I made something with it. So obviously, so if I can't get that glass again, if it was just something I had laying around, I will put that stuff on Etsy because that becomes more of like a limited edition, one of a kind type item since I don't have access to those resources again. Same with if I, see I have one of these. I bought this on Closeout at Michael's. So when I finish this product, this will be on Etsy because there's only one I can make of this. So the website, the Shopify site is more for multiples of things that I can repeat, restock. Um, you can buy more of if you like it. You can buy it for your friends. But as far as Etsy goes, those are pretty limited edition. Um, besides our coasters and magnets, which I'll show you in a sec. But if you see a piece like this or um, something similar, it is usually a limited edition product. These are also available on our Etsy. These are our coasters. These are two of my best sellers, which are the Sea Turtle. And it's a little off-center in the corner there. And then same with our French Bulldog. We have tons of options for coasters on the Etsy site. There are... I think there's like flowers, there are other animals as well, there's uh, paw prints, there's just all kinds of stuff on there really, and I'm going to be adding more after our show season as well, so stay tuned for that. And another popular item are our little magnets, so right now this is the elephant magnet, I don't know if you can see it, there we go. This is our top seller as far as a magnet goes, um, the turtles do really well as well. I'm going to be adding some other things onto the site pretty soon. So I have like little bees. And then we also have like cats and dogs and frogs and all just all kinds of little things we're going to be adding. So yeah, moving on into the business aspect of everything. Um, I will leave both of my websites linked down below. My Shopify site and my Etsy site if you guys want to take a look. And if you guys have any questions about Etsy or Shopify or starting your own business, of course, you can leave them below. I'm going to touch a little bit about that right now, but there's probably going to be things that you still have questions about and, you're gonna, and I'm going to leave out. So number one thing, um, get a plan together. Make a plan. I have notebooks everywhere and I've been planning this. I've been dreaming about this for so long and I said, you know what, I'm just going to do it. Is it hard for me? because I work two other jobs. Of course it is. Um, this becomes my third job. For weeks when I was getting my website started, I didn't even see my husband. I came straight home from work, I ate, I fed the animals, and I came in this room and I worked. And um, I sat here and watched TV. I watched Scandal. <laughs> I binge watched You. I watched a bunch of things on there just to keep me preoccupied to stay in this room and get the stuff done. It does become essentially a third job for me because I am working hours. I mean, sometimes I would stay up till midnight trying to get some things done. 
And the thing with when you're building a website, you want to have inventory. So, yeah, you do have to prepare yourself to not be around your family and friends for just a little bit. Um, you have to prepare yourself as far as how much money you want to put into this how much uh, inventory you want to build, if you want to do an Etsy, if you want to do a Shopify. Um, I would research everything before you start. I researched Shopify and other places. Um, I decided on Shopify just because of the security and how they handle everything and they build the website for you. And I really like that aspect of it because I'm not a website builder. So just do your research. If you can build your own website, you can probably find something that's cheaper. Um, and you want to just go ahead and make a plan. What you want your business to be, what items you want to carry, what is important to you, what are your goals for your business. I write all this down in notebooks everywhere. Um, I have a ton of notebooks and I probably write different things in each one, which is okay because you go through it and you're like, oh yeah, look at this and it'll make you go back to your other one and be like, okay, I wrote this, this, and this down in this notebook. And then, you know, it just kind of, keeps you in line as far as staying on track and so how I got started is I went down to my county you should research this for where you live I live in North Carolina so you go down to your county and you register your business name which you need to look through the books and make sure that that name is not already taken for me um, you can look up online in North Carolina so that's what I did um, so then I went down to my county and I registered my business. It was $26 and I registered as a sole proprietorship. So I already had a sole proprietorship previously. So I had my own EIN number, which is a, it's like electronic identification number or something like that. I don't know what the E stands for actually, but it's something that your business identifies with like a social security number, but it's for your business. Now, if you register as a sole proprietorship, you can just use your social security number. You do not need an EIN, but I did that just to keep things kind of separated. Um, that way, my social security number wasn't everywhere. To apply for your EIN, it is federal, so you do get online. And I will leave links to these things below as far as the federal EIN and stuff um, for the state you'll have to do you have to search that on your own for your own state so yeah I went down and got my DBA which was $26 um, I did that in August of last year actually knowing that I wouldn't be actually um, selling anything participating in retail side of my business until this year I was going to do this in January um, is when I actually started to take over the business as a whole um, but as far as getting everything started, I did it last year in August. I wanted to get everything going. So I had my bank account. I had a credit card for purchases, small purchases, supplies, things like that. And that I had, um, my sales tax and everything else. So that is why I started mine so early, uh, about four or five months before I actually put anything online. I didn't actually launch my website until March 1st. I did a small launch in February to try and drum up a little bit of interest, and then I did a full launch in March. Um, I was going to originally launch in January, but since the holidays end, um, not a lot of people shop in January, so I was kind of doing my research about that, and I realized that I didn't want to launch something where no one was shopping. So the springtime actually worked out really well because more people are buying. Okay, so after you have your DBA, you want to get a tax ID number. Well, you want to get your EIN after you get your DBA if you are applying for an EIN. If not, then you can just use your social security number if you're doing a sole proprietorship. If you are doing a business and you are having a partner or an LLC with multiple people, a corporation, I recommend getting a lawyer. Um, it's always easier and better to protect yourself when you have partners. For me, I'm just alone. I will probably turn this into a corporation in the future because that way um, it does protect me going further um, when my business gets bigger, if I have employees and everything. But for right now, a sole proprietorship is absolutely fine. Um, so you want to go get your EIN or use your social social security number and then you want to get a sales tax number so this is done through your state 
I'm in North Carolina, so I applied to the state of North Carolina, and they sent it about a month later. Um, and then I just told them the date that I wanted to start my business. So I was starting my sales. I just did one one. And since I am a new business, I only have to pay quarterly because I'm not expecting my sales to be huge. As your sales grow, they will require you to pay it monthly. So yeah, and I only, if you're selling online retail, as of right now, you only have to pay for items that were purchased by people in your state. Or if you're doing craft fairs, you do need to pay sales tax on those items as well for your state only. Um, this could change in the future. They're making a lot of retailers change. It's like Amazon has, you know, they charge you tax. Um, so this could change in the future, but for right now, you do not have to pay any sales tax except for your state. Now on Etsy, there are a few other states that require sales tax. I think it's like Pennsylvania and like four other ones, but Etsy takes care of that for you. So you don't even have to worry about that. You only have to worry about your state. Okay, so I did sales tax. Um, insurance, you want to get business insurance. Um, I know you may think like you don't have a product that really could cause someone to harm themselves or anything like that but say you're selling homemade candles and someone burns your house down they might come back and sue you so you want to make sure that you have insurance or say you're at a craft fair and someone trips on a rug you put down or they slice their finger open on something that broke or whatever you know you want to have insurance just to make sure that you're covered protect yourself it is so important to protect yourself because you don't want to lose everything because you didn't pay that thirty dollars a month in insurance or whatever which is literally what i'm paying so that's a very minimal expense you know okay next up you've done all the business side of everything if you're in a partnership or a corporation there might be a few more requirements but as far as my uh, sole proprietorship, those were like the four main things. Uh, registering my business name as a DBA, a tax ID, if you're going to do that, which is your EIN number, or your social security, you need your um, insurance and your tax, state tax information. So, sales tax, sorry, I don't know, I'm getting like choked up here. <laughs> So those are the four most important things to getting your business started plus pre-planning, doing research in your community, um, making sure that you're following all the rules and regulations as far as what you can and cannot sell, um, and getting licenses. Now if you're a food business or something like that, you do require further licensing, you require permits, um, health inspections, things like that, but this is just a general retail that I'm talking to you guys about. If you are selling food or something like that, you do want to look into that because it is totally separate and different. Okay, next thing I did was I started building up an inventory. So since I did get that credit card, I just did it in my own name. I didn't need a business name because I am a sole proprietorship. You can just get one in your name or if you have one that's empty. So my best suggestion to you would be to have one that is 0% for 18 months. That way, 0% interest for 18 months, sorry if I didn't clarify that. <laughs> um, that way you have a little bit of time to build up some inventory without putting your own personal money in it and then you are not paying interest for 18 months. So that gives you time to create sales and then pay that off. You don't want to keep that revolving because you don't want the temptation of spending more money. That is like... <laughs> a big no-no like in business you want to make sure that you are not getting overwhelmed when you have this huge credit card bill and your sales aren't coming in like crazy there are things you will need I mean you do need your startup products I mean you need your startup supplies if you can get them thrifted or reclaimed repurposed I mean that's amazing too but not everyone's creating something like that so you will need to spend some money um, if you're going to craft stores Joann's Michaels uh, Hobby Lobby AC Moore, the Dollar Tree has awesome crafts too, by the way. Um, look online. There are coupons. Every time you go to a store, there is a coupon available for you. It may just be for one thing. Bring a friend. Give them a coupon. Get your supplies half off. Hobby Lobby runs sales all the time. Michaels runs sales all the time. Joann's, don't pay full price for things you can get on sale. Um, there are so many things you can get on sale, so that will save you guys some money as well. So yeah, the credit card, um, you want to get the 0% for 18 months or whatever they can give you, 15 months. Um, that way you have time to make some sales and pay that off. 
You don't want that lurking around or hanging over your head while you're trying to run your business. It's, it's stressful and you don't, you just don't want it. So then you guys, you're building up your inventory. You want to find somewhere you can sell this inventory. So I've sold on Etsy for years. It was done under my parents' company um, and we switched it to my company this year. I like Etsy. They do take a pretty hefty amount of fees. Um, they take your processing fee, which is based on money, and they take a listing fee of 20 cents, which lasts for four months, and then they take, um, what was the other fee? A transaction fee. So that's like based on the total amount as well. So it is kind of hefty, the fees, but they have a platform that people are already using. There's tons of people that use Etsy. There's Etsy commercials. They're doing their marketing, advertising. So yeah, we can get in more in depth on Etsy if you want to in a video, but that is one option. Shopify is something that I just did this year. It's been slow. I will admit that it has been slow and I will also say that I need to work on it a little bit more. Um, as far as my pictures go and everything, I'm not 100% happy with them. I'm not a photographer. So I think that is kind of a place that I do struggle. I'll see you guys with a credit card. If you have enough money built up that you can invest in your business personally, that's awesome. Like I would do that first, but I don't want anyone to be discouraged if you don't have the money um, to start your own business because there are other um, revenue or there are other avenues to help you pay for things is what I'm saying. Um, let's see. So you've built up your inventory. You're getting some shops. Um, Another thing is there is an Amazon handmade. I just signed up for that and was approved. I haven't put anything up yet. Um, I literally signed up yesterday. Um, I was going to go through some of my inventory items and see what I would like to put up there, what I think would match with Amazon. Um, they have waived all fees for until the end of this year for handmade artisans. There is, however, a 15% referral fee, which does the payment processing, um, houses your item on their website and everything like that. So do keep that in mind. You don't want things with small profit margins up on there because then you're not making any money. Another thing you can do to sell your items is attend craft shows, artisan markets, fairs, things like that. Um, I have five shows coming up. I have one starting on the 6th. I have one the 20th and then May 5th, May 11th and May, um, 17th or is it the 19th? I can't remember. 18th, 19th, one of those days. So yeah, I do have five spring markets. I would have had six. Um, there's a big show here on April 27th, which I applied to, but I did not get in. A ton of people applied to this show. Um, I've never been a vendor there, so obviously if you have been, you get first dibs, but um, I'm going to keep applying. I'm going to go to it, see what they're looking for, keep applying. Um, you never know when that spot will open up. And I also did hear about a few other shows, which I will look into for next year. But these are my spring shows. I do have some fall shows lined up as well. Um, summer, I try to stay away from shows because it's hot. <laughs> we live in North Carolina. It's over 100 degrees. The last thing I want to do is be setting up a tent outside sweating. Um, there's cat hair floating around here. Um, and doing that kind of stuff. There are some June shows which I'm interested in that are inside. Um, I have, I'm attending my first one on April 14th, 13th, that Saturday. So I'll see how that show goes. If it goes well, I'll apply for the June ones. Um, let's see. Summer is also a tough month because everyone's on vacation. As far as craft fairs go, another place you can display products. Um, if you are, if you have a friend that has a business, if you, you know, know of businesses in the community that sell similar product, you can ask for them to put in a small section of your stuff. You can sell wholesale to them as well. Um, there's a lot of places now that have vendor booths. So if you're doing antiques or handmade furniture, reclaimed, repurposed, things like that, you can get a booth. And if you are a food business or something like that, you could also look into schools. They do have events. I know when we had a food business, there was a college that asked us to come there. They paid for us for the day to be there and that's how it went. But you want to make sure you're prepared for those because they do get pretty busy. 
and things like that. So there are so many options of places you can sell your items for a less expensive um, amount of money. And yeah, so I think that is everything on the business side um, without... I can't think of anything else without, you know, this video being 20 million hours long. It's already going to be a long video. I hope that you guys enjoyed it though. I hope that you enjoyed the products I showed you. And if you are looking into starting a business, I hope this was good advice to get you started. If you guys have any questions, leave them down below. If you want anything that is more in depth regarding Etsy or Shopify or as far as craft shows go, please let me know as well. I am planning on vlogging me getting ready for my craft show season as far as what I do to get ready, what inventory I bring with me, and then as well as showing you guys around the craft show a little bit. And yeah, I hope that you guys enjoyed. Please go ahead and subscribe. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. I appreciate it so much. And I will see you guys really soon. Bye.